was a penalty. I think Ronaldo uh, knew that the, the, the full back was trying to get back in position, Sanusi, and he just bumped into him. His momentum took him towards him, the full back, I mean, towards Ronaldo, but I think Ronaldo was already going to ground before the player. So it was that wasn't a penalty. The bold, the bold Cristiano begs to differ, though. Now, <laughs> you sure what will. do you think? Yeah, it was a wonderful touch, wasn't it? I don't know why he didn't stay up because I would imagine he would have got himself on for a left-footed shot, and he, he felt contact coming, and that's what he does. He looks for penalties, but fair play to Zanussi. I think he held his hands out. He stood up tall, and the referee saw, and that from from that movement that um, you know Ronaldo was was looking for it and he waved it away and didn't want to go and have a look. Interesting. Seen them given, I think is what he's uh, <laughs> trying to say there to uh, Oliveira. Um, right, let's just check in, by the way, on the other game, which has just finished in Sevilla, the other last 16 first leg. That's uh, Dortmund's coach there. He's a happy man because Haaland, in the middle of your picture, Erling Braut Haaland, the age of Haaland and Mbappe has it started. What Mbappe did last night, well, Haaland only managed uh, two this evening for Dortmund. Uh, but Luke de Jong pulled one back in the second half there for Sevilla, uh, as you can see. So 3-2, that one finished. That one very much alive for the second leg. And this one too, Brian, very much alive for the second leg, thanks to that crucial goal from Chiesa. Oh, yeah, it's a lifeline for Juventus. Didn't play well tonight, didn't function well in any part of the pitch, the back, the middle, or up front. Parata made a difference when he came on. Ramsey actually made a difference too when he came on. And that goal gives him something, you know, it means that a 1 0 win at home would be enough for them. Whereas when they went out to Leon last year, they were 1 0 down in the first leg, conceded the penalty in the first half, and struggled to re retrieve the situation. A team they would have expected to be. This gives them a chance, but they've got to play better. A Porto. Yeah. Played above themselves, I think, tonight, but they have gained a lot of confidence from that. And they were, they were compact, disciplined, and organised. I felt for about 70, 75 minutes. Then they lost their shape a little bit, and their changes didn't help them. Yeah, it could be crucial, couldn't it, those last few moments of that game? All right, Ryan, before the match, I asked you where you ranked Juventus, and you said they were in your top group of contenders for the Champions League title this season. That first 70 minutes anyway, were they well off that? Can you defend your position based on that? <laughs> they were well off it tonight, but they're still in this tie because they scored a goal and um, they have a second leg to play at home. It doesn't make that much difference that it's home at the moment without any crowds, but they're giving themselves a reasonable opportunity. Whether Porto can produce a performance as good as they did tonight, remains debatable because they're certainly not in my top six, although they played mm. well tonight. I mean, if you ask me who my top six are, I it was a kind of a random one, but I would put the three um, English teams, Manchester City, Liverpool and Chelsea in that, with Bayern Munich, obviously, and it's easy to include Juventus then and make five. I'm not sure how my sixth one is. I'm no obvious contender after that because... PSG, you, you PSG. Know, I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah, of course, PSG, you compare, but you're right now the Spanish team at the moment. Would you really compare afraid. PSG's performance last night to, to Juventus, what we saw this evening? Um, in terms of what I've been... Mean, PSG's performance was far superior mm. to Juventus on the night, but, you know, they were playing a very weak Barcelona team. That's not a, it's not a great measure to say, well, PSG are superb suddenly because they beat Barcelona 4-1 last night. I, I thought... Barcelona were so poor and so so weak in all all but you, sense. But you're also saying Porto are no top side either. No, they're not. They're, by tradition, they usually go out at this stage. They're not usually in the running as it goes on in this competition. They're a seller of players. If they've anyone decent, they're picked off. They're long gone since the days of um, Marino scrapping it out with teams and winning the UEFA Cup and the Champions League, which they did over a couple of seasons. They're far, far behind that level now. I mean, they're struggling in their own league behind Sporting Lisbon, 10 points behind. <laughs> but they've played well tonight. But Juventus are better than they should. Show to right. me, but they, they, they weren't very good. But they, they're surely better. The manager can get more from them than how they played tonight. They were very, very disappointing. I'm saying there's no area of the pitch they played well. Goalkeeper back four, nothing. Midfield, little bits and pieces. Jerry was thought Jays had played very well and was the best player. It was easy enough to be the best player. They were, they were, mm. I'd say they were brutal tonight, but they got away with it. Well, Brian's not putting up much of a defence of their Champions League credentials. Then, then Niall, is he is he right to do so? Um, 
vital goal, really, really important goal, set at half time, they need a goal. And a bad performance, if you're going to play really bad, you know, to get that away goal is the silver lining on, on the night and that gives them hope that they can get better. Um, the two subs did great, I, I, I thought, you know, uh, Murata and Ramsey when they came on. But you begs the question about Murata, why wasn't he on from the start? Because I thought he had a real influence. And it, it coincided with the Porto players after 70, 75 minutes getting tired. You know, they didn't have the legs. They didn't bring on subs at that point. I thought Pirlo got it right at that particular time in the game to put players in. Uh, Conchichel left it later. And so they got themselves a lifeline in the game. But lots to improve on if they're to start uh, being serious about putting a, a challenge in for this competition. And, and I'd be different, Brian. I think PSG, no matter who they played last night, they'd have, they'd have been brilliant. Let's have a look at the first goal. And um, Niall mentioned Conce Sao and, and, and Perlo. And, and did Conce Sao kind of school the less experienced coach in those early stages with the way he had his team set up? Um, I think he did his own job for his own team. You could say Perlo didn't get the best out of his side. It wasn't a match between the two managers, but certainly, you know, they had a plan, a game plan. We seen this right from the off. Very unusual circumstance. The goal in the first minute, the ball back, as we see, wasn't a good ball. But I didn't think Chesney did much for him when he played it to him. Chesney should have moved to his left as well after he plays it out to Bentancourt here. Look, he stays in the muck in the middle of the goal to the right hand post, and it, it gave a little angle for Taremi to cut him off and he's right from the kickoff of the start of the second half Pepe is up there so this is the reply practiced on the training ground on the Pepe Amar hey, yeah it's an old style one there we would have often that. used that one but not with the centre half being in the line to get up there so to win the ball back here there's a lovely little succession of quick passes but the two centre midfield players for Juventus Rabio and Benton Carr look no real urgency loads of players three six seven of them there against Three and Morega gets the ball from the full back on that side, who played very well. Man Manafa is able to pick him out. One touch was left foot, and then he sticks her in his left foot. He, he did great. I was thrilled Marega, he got that goal because I was watching game. him all night. He worked his socks off. He came back, he ran, he ran forward when he had to run forward. He held it up, he tackled, he was a nuisance, and he got his rewards because it was a difficult enough chance. He, you know, he was at pace, it came to him, he sorted his feet out, and he slotted it away. And, and you know, it was just an amazing moment to think, wow, Juventus are in big trouble now. Um, it couldn't have been worse. Like, is that a bad sign to, to lose goals so early in halves in terms of how you're mentally prepared for the game? I think so, because when you Focus. look at the two players that, that Brian mentioned, Rabiot and Ben Tancur, you know, they were just trotting back a few seconds after the, the game was restarted. No panic in their yeah, own, no panic. Was there? They were just trotting back. And, uh, yeah. and it is a bad sign, Tommy, to lose a goal in the first minute at the start of the match and the one to start the second half. It's a very, very strange thing. It does sound, I mean, we'll be doing Manchester United tomorrow night. We might discuss that aspect of their game. They've been losing a lot of ga goals early in the games. And it, it takes a lot to get back into matches. You know, I often say, the best time you can see the goals in the fourth minute of the match, but not the fourth minute of the second <laughs> half, because now you're running out of time to retrieve the situation. They did manage to do it twice. But I'm talking about Perlo, it doesn't say much for the coach that they, the last, after leaving his instructions, they go and concede yeah, goals. Yeah, but Perlo, but you... can, Perlo can say what he likes in the dressing <laughs> yeah. room. The players have got to go out and do it. OK, let's have a look then, Brian, at what is good defending by Porto for most of that game, 70 odd minutes we'll say of it, and then counter-attacking moves, very well organised, had a game plan and it was working really well for them. Yeah, and we said it before the game, they'd have to defend well against Ronaldo. I thought, I thought Morata would be his partner, Kluvesevsky seemed to be the one. But look, reading of the game, Mbemba, very good, appointed him out before the match. His concentration level's very good, gets help here from Oliveira, back in. But you see the work rate of everyone, as I pointed out, Morega is back within 20 yards of goal. Here he is, making the challenge, Morega, and putting off the Juventus player, trying to hear Pepe reads the situation comes over, makes the challenge, forces the young player, uh, Kluveski, into a mistake. Ball cut back out of the box. Moraga's hanging around. They've always got the numbers there. Look at the unit, the whole team, 4-4-2, within 30 yards of their own goal. Moraga tied, tied his up again. It was very effective. And Juventus were running out of ideas, long ball into the penalty area. That continued... Early into the second half, Niall was no change, and they looked very comfortable. Yeah, and, and you, you just thought, you know, would they hold out? And as soon as the subs came on, obviously we found out, and, and gaps started to appear. Uh, good defending there, that was the first sort of 
good effort, I would have thought, that Juventus put together. But as uh, as time went on, you yeah, saw you the weirdness. Yeah, you felt toll on, yeah, on them. Yeah, you could just see the, them getting a bit leggy and dropping off and the the um, attempt to get the ball back in numbers. There's a big space, We didn't see that yeah, in the first hour of the game. There. This is 73 minutes in. Yeah, they but win they the ball did back. recover it. They, they do recover it. And you think that this is it now. They were really on the opposite. That was 73 minutes. That was that. That was the last yeah. real good attack they had. Let's have a look at the goal um, then. And is it a case of that the, the, the changes worked? Or, or to what degree is it a case of the changes working? Well, or, well there or was that legs and there was, and there was runners. And Rabiot decides to go on a, on a run here to space, as, as Brian was mentioning there. And they're just a little bit leggy. Normally, they'd have had two players out there. They'd have had cover out the back, but if you look when it comes to the far post, uh, Chiesa comes in unmarked. You know, they're, they're just a little bit disorganised, trying to work out what's happening. Um, it comes out to him. He, 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 knack, he, he hits the ball into the ground, and it's very unusual style. Uh, they used to call that the Barnes-Wallace effect in my day, the old yeah. bouncing bomb. Um, <laughs> was, yeah, again, you see the gaps the appear. There. Now, I'm, I'm really surprised Chiesa didn't go for it himself when it went out on that far side and tried to, to hit it first time. He, he decided to go back to Ronaldo, but you can't. They're, they're now at sixes and sevens. We, yeah, we weren't seeing this on. kind of space, Brian. Were no, we? the compactness has gone out of the team, particularly the wide players aren't getting back as they were in the in, in the first half. And here's the big moment, very late in the game. And you know, I give the benefit of the doubt to Sanusi there. I think he, I don't think he makes any attempt to doesn't make a stick his foot out to stop. He's, the ball. he's in his stride you now. I think he does touch it with, with his toes on, onto the onto the foot of, of Ronaldo, but not enough. Not, there was no intent to knock him over, and it took too long. But the time it's easier to say that in slow motion. Yeah. But in real time, I felt Ronaldo had made the touch, great touch back, yeah. and by the time he went down, a lot happened. Yeah, already very interesting uh, second leg.